Let's say goodbye to blurry transitions. So we have this spin transition right here. And the most common way of getting rid of these black boxes right here is actually taking our clip, adding a replicate tool by three, adding a bunch of mirrors. So then everything mirrors itself around that original image, and then adding another transform layer that basically allows us to scale in 300%. Now you'll see we're getting that spin effect without having those black lines on each side. The issue with that, if I go frame by frame, you can see that if I change my view to let's say 400% and move this up on the subject, instantly when we go to our transition, we are getting blurry footage because we are actually scaling this up 300%. And now with one simple step, we can preserve that quality. So this is the before. See how we're jumping in and it's losing the quality? And then this is the after. We are now preserving that quality. So if we play that transition back, we have the full quality transition with no loss in quality. I use Artlist for all my stock footage, music, sound effects, etc. So if you want two months free, just click the link in the description down below. Now, some of you might have no idea what I was talking about in the beginning about replicating and mirrors and all this stuff. So I actually want to quickly dive into what that is. But if you already know what I'm talking about, I have included a free preset linked down below that will do all the heavy lifting for you. And you can skip later in this video using the timestamps in the description. All right, so let's say I have this clip and I wanna transition between them and let's create a simple transition. I like going to the middle of the clip by up and down arrow keys and then holding the shift key, left arrow key twice, that will jump me 10 frames. And then I'll just make a cut right there, go back to the center, jump 10 frames, shift right arrow key twice and make another cut right there. And then I like to right click and then nest those clips, but you can also set key bindings like I have and I click N and that makes it nested. So now that we have this nested sequence, we can start to add the transform effect. And you're gonna quickly realize that we're going to need to do something different. Let's do like a simple shake. So for example, I'll just go to the beginning and then I'm gonna move the position around a little bit. Oh, let's just do horizontal and then move this here. Boom, 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 that looks good and then reset that and drag that out towards the end. So that in itself is a little shake effect, but I want it to have some motion blur. So uncheck that and use composition shutter angle. Let's change that to 100. So now I'm getting motion blur, but you're seeing that I'm actually getting some edges right here, like these black edges. And the only real way to quickly get rid of those is just simply scale it up. But when you do that, it jumps and pops a little bit, which is a cool effect on itself, but it's not what we're going for. So for this particular example, what we would need is something like I was talking about before. So I'm gonna just uncheck that transform effect for the time being, we need to add an effect. So type in replicate and drag that on above our transform layer since we really didn't need to do that first and then change it to three. So now we're replicating this three times and then let's go to mirror and then we're dragging on that mirror effect. And what this does is you can drag around like the reflection X value to the left till we get super close to that right there. And I'm gonna hold shift and control so it moves slower. And then what I'm doing is lining it up perfect. And then boom, that looks good. Now I just have to drag another mirror effect and kind of do the same process, but I'm gonna change the reflection angle to 90 and then start moving this around. So I can see that I'm towards the bottom. So I'm gonna change the Y value move that up until we get rid of that line. That looks great. Add another mirror effect and let's do negative 90. And let's see where we are. So it looks like I'm gonna change the Y value and go to the top. I'm just moving this around till I get rid of that line right there. And that looks good. And then one final mirror effect and let's change this to actually 180 and then move our X value to the left and then hold control and shift to move this a little bit slower. And then we got rid of that value. All that did was allow us to create some edges right here. So now if we re-enable our effect, you'll see, wait, this isn't working because all you have to do now is change this transform effect to 300%. And then that way we have created that transition and all the edges are seamlessly blended together. Now that took some time. So what you can do is actually just delete everything. Now for everyone who chose to skip to this point, I just created a little shake transition using the transform effect right here. As you can see, there's black edges right here. So let's get rid of those. 
use the preset linked in the description down below and simply drag that on before your transform and you'll see you're very familiar with this it created that mirror effect that we're talking about and then you can enable your effect and then you just have to change your scale to 300. so now we have that seamless transition that's a little shake thing with no black edges now you may be wondering to yourself how do we get the full quality so that we aren't actually losing quality when we transition all you have to do is duplicate your transition point by holding option or alt and then just select all of the mirrors and replicate and simply delete those and then change your scale back down to 100 percent and now playing this back you can see that we have the full quality transition now let's show you how fast this process should be as long as you've already created those presets ahead of time so let's just show a zoom out preset I have not actually created that preset yet, so let's just quickly do that. Go to transform, drag that onto here, and then I'm gonna go to the beginning, change the scale from 100, and then let's go to where that transition point is right before, and then let's zoom out to change this to let's say 75, and then move one frame forward. We're going to actually zoom in a little bit, so 100 is full, so let's go to 125, and then go towards the end and change this back to 100. So at first glance, it's like zooms out a little bit. And then all we have to do is right click on our first one, ease out, and then right click on our last one and go to ease in and click down on this little arrow right here. And let's click on these keyframes and drag this out because we are basically creating a ramp like so. And then this one at the end, we're going to click and drag out as well. So that should basically create a nice little quick little zoom thing. But as we see, we got some black edges right here. So let's just imagine that that was already created and our shutter angle was 100. So let's just save this preset as zoom out and it's set to scale. So now we have a preset. So here's where it gets a little bit complicated. When you're dealing with spins and stutters and shifts and position based things where you're just changing the X and Y value and no scale, it's pretty simple. But now when you mess with zoom, you actually have to modify some of those keyframes. So this is how I would do it now that we've created that zoom preset. So I'm gonna hold option or alt and drag that layer to the top. And I'm gonna just simply drag on my zoom out thing that I just made. So as you can see, it's zooming out. And if I uncheck the bottom one, you can see that we have those black edges right there. And now I'm going to go ahead and add that replicate down to here to our bottom layer, but we don't have any zoom effects going on right there. So on our bottom layer now, I'm going to add that zoom out preset that I just made, but nothing's happening, right? We still see those black edges. That's because our top layer is actually scaling down to 100 to 75, and our bottom layer is still doing that. But remember, when you do this mirror replicate, you actually have to change your first parameter, if I uncheck this, to 300%. So 100 to 300, right? And then I go to the next keyframe and it's at 75. So what is 75? If I'm going to, from 100 down to 75. That's like three fourths, right? So what's three fourths of 300? That would be 225. So now I'm going to change this one to 225. So if I play that back, you'll see, okay, I'm getting that zoom out thing. But now I got to look at this. I'm at 125. So what is that? Like a quarter above 100. So then what's a quarter above 300? It would be. 375. So I'm going to change this to 375 right there. And then the ending keyframe should be 300. Now I know that's really complicated, but that will actually give you the best results. In a nutshell, it's possible to keep the full quality of your transition by doing a couple extra steps. It really is fast when you're dealing with position based things like X and Y values. But when you deal with scale, you have to kind of do some math to get those keyframes to match up perfectly. But once you create it, you can also make that a preset. So then now you can just save it and use it next time. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you did, let me know down in the comments below, hit that like button and consider subscribing because I'm going to be making some more stuff in the future. I'll see you next time.